you got to be changed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you don't change your mind, you're going to have stinking thinking. No. Your behavior has to change. Yes. Don't tell me you're born again and don't change. Yes. Don't tell me you're born again and still lie. Yes. You can't. I'm sorry. What's on the record? Go play. God, take me down another road. But what does John 8, 32 say? Well, we talked about this before. Mm -hmm. 8.32 And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Truth is an important part of your walk with Christ. The truth will make you free. I remember we talked about that before. Ron said he'll never say sad. He's been made free. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Alright, go to Luke 6. Luke chapter 6. Wow. <coughs> Verses. Well, just one verse. Verse 45. Luke 6, 45. And it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his what? <coughs> Heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring it forth which is evil. See, we don't know your heart, right? For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's on the record, go on play. That's right. All I got to do is let you talk long. If you want to know what somebody's into, let them talk long enough. Just straighten it out. It'll talk. It will. All the truth always reveals itself. Let's look at a couple of stories here. And I want y'all to look at these stories in the Bible that Jesus talked about. He laid it on my heart. I guess way right after I preached it before. And I said, okay, God, you know, I don't see what you're talking about. You know, I was in prayer that night. And I said, oh, oh. You know, if things come to me and I just immediately go search it out. You know what I mean? That's just me with word, you know. A word will hit me or something will hit me and I just go search it out. I, I can't help it. Sometimes it's meant for me, and then sometimes it's meant for everybody. Most of the time it's just for me. <laughs> so, I know I wrote it down, so let's find out what God said about it. But I know it deals with the <laughs> See if you can see the eternity in these two stories I'm getting ready to bring out that Jesus talked about. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. Are y'all ready for some meat? Who in here is ready for some meaty word? I mean, one time I told a meat here, and they just went, yeah, we know everybody. <laughs> but I've been in prayer, and God said, it's time to bring some meat. Now, the meat that I'm going to bring has nothing to do with building your intellectual logical man. The meat I bring is for healing. It's for your deliverance. It's for you to understand that God still loves you despite you. Right. He wants you to wake up before he returns so he wants to send you to hell. Amen. Jesus Amen. cried in the garden of Gethsemane. Now this is Warren's revelation only. You ready? Mm -hmm. Most people said he was scared when he was in the garden, sweating yeah. great drops of blood. Yeah. And boy, they said that actually happened. He was in such tense yeah. that he, his blood had to sweat. <laughs> but when I looked up, he said, Lord, take this cup from me. It's the only time you see him pray something three times in a row. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, what you mean by this cup? That cup represented the cup of judgment in Revelation. That he's the only one who could pour it out. Because yes. I used to pour judgment on people through my mouth all the time. And God took me to that story. He said, you don't have a right to do that. This man was sweating great drops of blood because he don't want to judge you and send you to hell. Amen. That's why he was crying. That's why he was sweating. Because he knew he had to send some of you to hell. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he wasn't scared to go to the cross. He preached it for three years. Don't you know I got to die for you? Don't you know a friend gives up his life for you? Amen. So he knew he had to go. Or we wouldn't have salvation here. Amen. So that cup represented what? Judgment. He did not want to send none of you to him. Amen. What a Lord we have. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I don't know what that came. That's for somebody. But that was Rev. Warren's take because Warren was doing something. Wrong. He wasn't walking in integrity. He was beating people up with his mouth. That's
That's why I can't stand to hear people beat up other people with their mouth. Mm -hmm. But it comes with the whole thing of a preacher. If you're a preacher, you want to get beat up with the mouth. You want to get judged. There are going to be people who always think you're always preaching at them. There are going to be people, man, was you in my house that night? No, but God was. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> but the Spirit was. He's everywhere at one time. But also be happy that you got that. Because it's called conviction. No conviction in you, you ain't going to I'm glad you feel bad. Be happy that you felt bad. <laughs> now, give me right. That's not like that. Give me right. Matthew 18, start at verse 21. Then Peter, <laughs> then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times? I ain't going to count. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Yes. Now that's an opinion. No matter how many times he hurts you, you got to get no, not just seven. I beat you up today, cuss you today. You gotta forgive me. I come back an hour later, do the same thing. You gotta. I come back two minutes after that, do the same thing. You gotta keep forgiving me. I come back a second later, you gotta keep forgiving me. That's all right. Isn't it? But well, watch what they say. I love this line. Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. For, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, watch this, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. You know why that was there? That was law. You owe something, they put you in slavery. You had to serve for seven years. All right? And there were a lot of people who had to pay a debt. They served for seven years. And a lot of times the slaves were treated. Slavery didn't mean the same thing as slavery in, in the American history. No. Okay. A lot of times they were employed well. Yeah. Okay. Then some of the slaves would say they wanted to be permanent slaves. And you know what they used to do? We, we do it now, piercing like it ain't nothing. You know? Even brothers wear two earrings. I ain't never understand. I didn't want to wear one way. Okay. But, but they would take their ear and put it to the door and bore a hole in it. And that meant you were a permanent slave of that master. Amen. But I mean, the, the slave would have wanted to do it. Because he loved his master. Amen. I ain't doing it, but anyway. I ain't doing it. Verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with what? Compassion. Now he owed this man 10,000 talents. Right? Knowing this man could put him, his wife, and kids, and everybody in slavery. Sell it, get his money back. But what did he do? The Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of the debt. Now I can see this guy going to his bed. Who oh, believe you can up so wrong? We see it coming here all the time. You know, Ronald, I'm so sorry. And we forgive Then we see you coming drunk. Can I stay tonight? No! Where you come back man? The same way sure is it. You are not going to poison everybody else here. Now, you come back tomorrow and you're sober. Right, I'm sorry about what I did last night. Come on in, have something to eat. Come on, sir. But you ain't sleeping here drunk. You're causing a bunch of mess. Amen. But the servant was moved with compassion. The Lord of the servant moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of the debt. Now watch this. But the same servant went out. Hello. And found one of his fellow servants. Which owed him. A hundred. Now watch this. He owed 10,000. This guy only owed him a hundred. Why is he attacking me? Why is he attacking me? But you owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him. Now, it wasn't praying for him. He showed up and laid hands to pray for him. He laid hands to hurt that man for a hundred. He laid hands on him and took him by the throat. Come here, where's my money? How many of y'all grab somebody by the throat just because they stole your crap? I know, I did too. Just because they took a dollar bill off 
the table. Mm. Or you thought they were in your pocket and stole your check. Where my stuff? Or 50 cent. Took it by the throat. Pay me with that horse. Watch, watch carefully. And he would not. He would give him a break. He would give him a break. But went and cast him in the prison till he should pay the debt. <laughs> so, when his fellow servants saw what was done, when his homeboy saw what was done, no snitch now, huh? I think they can already rap. When they saw what was done, they were very sorry and came. Better watch it if people don't like it. Mm. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring it to our day and time. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is the way I see what's going on in my day and time. You know what I'm saying? Here he is begging for forgiveness and letting me loose from it, but yet can't get nobody else to break. How many people you know about that? Come on. Even in your own home. Verse 32. Then this Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, Oh, thou wicked servant. If you, from your hearts, forgive not everyone his brother, yeah, trust me. Amen. 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 Hello. Amen. If you don't forgive, neither will your father forgive you. Amen. 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 I don't think I gotta explain that too much. No. Hello. Amen. Who's ready to forgive somebody? Amen. Nobody. Okay. Amen. I'm gonna forgive you all. I love you all. I forgive you all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Go to Luke 16. Let's look at another story. Let's look at starting at verse 1. Luke 16, verse 1. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain man, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused, uh, accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called them and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of your stewardship. Let me stop there for a second. Hold on, stop. If you're responsible in any way, shape, or form around here and have authority, that's God giving you stewardship. If God bless you with $10, He's going to see how you want to treat that $10. Amen. See, I used to spend so much money in drugs, it would amaze you. I spent up to $1,500 in a, in a three-day period just smoking myself to death. <coughs> but then when I finally got my life together, went to Teen Challenge, became a, a Christian counselor, and stayed there for two years, and they began to pay me. You know what they paid me? $50 a week. So that was $200 a month. But on that $200 a month, I tied. I gave an offering. Cell phones were pretty much the same. I paid a cell phone. Uh -huh. I traveled back and forth throughout the whole Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to me that I was doing all that on $200. Amen. I couldn't believe it. Amen. You know, it was just amazing. But then as I then God was testing my stewardship. What are you doing with your money? People hate that question. What are you doing with your money? Because if I see what you're doing with your money, I know where your heart is. That's right. Now I like to add, if I see your computer, I know where your heart is. You let me look at your computer, I can tell you your heart. <laughs> your bank account and the computer. Amen. It sure enough will. They tell the truth when you like no other thing. And believe me, I know. Amen. <laughs> Verse 2 again, and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear of the, uh, hear this of thee? Give an account of the stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord take away, for the Lord take away from 
for me, the, the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. Mm. He's taking my job. I don't know I did. I don't want to go out there and beg. I used to tell myself, if I ever became homeless, I would just kill myself. Yeah. I couldn't live like that. Mm -hmm. God said, okay, I'm going to make you homeless. Amen. Boom. Amen. Uh -huh. Then I realized, I'm still living. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because he provided. Amen. Verse 4. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their house. So ain't nobody going to want me if I lose my job. Mm -hmm. Come on, people. Are y'all Amen. Some of y'all are thinking like this. I don't want my family members to know the condition I'm in. I don't want them to know I go to friendship to get fit. Amen. I don't want them to know I go to friendship to get a bath and a shower. Come on. Why were you ashamed of it? All right, man. That shames you more than your addiction. That shames you more than your fornication. That shames you more than you steal and you cheat. You know, God's been working on me about income tax. Oh, see, see, see. Let's, let's talk about people who are working jobs. Hello. Amen. Cheat every year on the income tax. Amen. And I even thought about it. I said, Lord, I owe those people two more thousand dollars for my taxes. <laughs> what am I going to do? Should I join up with my wife? Lord said, you're going to pay it. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to pay it. I said, you sure brought a message of integrity you went to right home. <laughs> but I wouldn't get blessed if I did. You understand what I'm saying? Because that, that little two thousand dollars, it doesn't already shrink. You ought to see how much it was before I got the two thousand dollars. But how many people cheat on the income tax and still think they okay? Christians? Nobody in here relies on their taxes? Yes. Okay. I just was going to see if there was going to be some integrity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, verse 5. And he shall call every one of his lords debtors. Wait, where am I at now? I'm, I'm, yeah, verse 5. So he shall call every one of his lords debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Listen, listen to me. I love Jesus. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. You know what four score is. Four score means twenty, so that's yeah. eighty. Okay. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of life. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. Some of this is going over y'all here now. I, I can feel it. Amen. No. Uh, amen. 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 Verse 10. He that is faithful, maybe you'll get it now. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Yes. I'm going to give you a little to see what you're going to do. Because you don't deserve much if you want to treat with a little bit of gave. Hello. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in the much. God knows that right. People say, bro, you want to be a millionaire the way you preach? I never wanted to be a millionaire because I preach. That was never my motive. Because God knows with my stinking thinking, he gave me a million dollars at the wrong time, preaching going out the door. I'm going to be on some island where they can ship me some cocaine and a bunch of women, and I'm going to smoke myself to hell. Come on now, get it right. God knows I don't need no whole lot of money. But I'm growing. There you go. But I still tell God, don't give me more than I deserve. Amen. But when you give it to me, help me to give it away. That's why I love friendship. That's why I love Pastor Rizal. Pastor Rizal is a giver, y'all. Y'all don't see, I've gotten a little bit closer than some of you, and I see what he does. Y'all call him honorary and things. That's nasty. But he used wisdom. Don't y'all see how the abundance come in here? That's because that man sticks and he loves Jesus. I'm sorry. He's a giver. Don't be a hater. That's why he gets it all the time. 
Amen. Amen. And I want a part of that, to be honest. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all need to walk up to him. I'm sorry, I'm taking a break, look. And just give to him. Amen. Amen. Even if it's a dollar. If he Amen. blessed you with a hotel bill. If he blessed you with your prescription. For, how many preachers you know pay your prescription? No. no. How many people preachers you know put you up in a hotel? No. no. But as soon as you get 10 or 20 dollars, do you give him that? No. Now, I ain't talking about no prosperity. I'm just saying, out of your heart, be a giver. Amen. I'll let you know the job I have. We ain't friends. I love you. 
If you make it to heaven, we'll dance.